All right, the snare drum tuning of, of Bonham. Um, I've spent a lot of time on it, and, and I do know, and I don't do it. I mean, I think this, this to me, well, first off, I do think with Bonham, there's two things that are important. I've noticed that when you use a quoted emperor, emperor, um, you, you get more of that sound, although there is still a tuning to it. Um, this is real story. And plus, too, Bonham also used, and I, you know, I know a lot of guys don't use them, and I know Ludwig doesn't put them in the drums anymore unless they're the uh, 5 by 14 black lights or acrylites, are tone controls. So, but this is without the tone control. So it's kind of muted anyway because of the nature of the emperor. But also, I just bring it up, you sort of just touch it to the bottom of the top head. So you'll actually see in recordings, or well, like when you see like the Royal Albert Hall, uh, you know where he's got the blonde thermogloss, you know maple set. You can actually see because on a on a superphonic, the tone control is actually um, like the 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 throat. This is a converted super sensitive, which is aluminum, which I had buffed down, which I think looks totally cool. It makes it makes it look like schnickel. Uh, and so I hit it buffed down a place in Chicago, the pitted chrome take off, and you buffed it, and I think it looks really cool, so I put all the hardware back on. But anyway, it is a converted super, meaning that there was a, a parallel mechanism. And supers do, on a, they do have snare beds, so guys, some guys think they don't, but they do. Anyway, this is an ambassador bottom, and this is a 42-strand snare. Uh, this one is a little different, though. This one actually says 42S on it, and it has these little notches. I think these are a little better than the other ones that are out there, which I have floating around here somewhere, which I think suck. Uh, there are some of the 42-strand ones that come from, I don't know what the hell I do with it, but they don't sound good. They, they're always real, these are always super loose, kind of no matter what you do. But anyway, this one here, it'll, if you ever see these, it says 42S Taiwan. I don't, you know, I think sometimes with Gibraltar, they might get them every so often from different factories. So this might be a Gibraltar of your, I don't know, of a, a year ago or something. So if you do use the 42 strand, I would, I would use this. But I don't really think it's the strands. You'll see, you know, pictures of bottom over the years, starting in the early 70s, where you do see 42 strand. But you also see pictures where you see the regular, and the drum really, to me, still sounds the same. It's in the tuning. So, but the, definitely the key to the snare drum is, is a lot of guys, and these are a little loose, you can sort of see, no matter kind of how hard I tighten it. You know, I don't know if the Gretsch were better or whatever but uh, that he used a lot of, but um, they can't be too tight because then you get like that boxy like, Gah! and you don't really get any snare response. But the bottom head does have to be very tight. And then what I'll do is, is I'll give the pitch here of the bottom head. It's like a timbali. Da, da, burn. You know what timbali -y, like? Hear that? top head, which I will now disengage this tone control. There's an overtone of like a minor, but, but what will happen is there definitely is, this is what I believe about any drum. But there's, you know when you're in the shower, or you're, I don't know, in any tiled room or whatever, and you'll go, if you go through the scale like, um, and you hum all the way up, eventually there will be a note, I'm sure there's a name for it, where the room will really like reverberate. Like you'll really get like a sympathetic note or whatever that is. I do think with drums that does apply. And I think that what is, hap is happening here with this particular drum now, I mean to me, right now that snare drum, that sounds almost exactly like the Moby Dick studio. But, you know, I think, though, that it, it, it boils down to... I think it boils down to really... The, the bottom... What This is what, I, in fact, I have never done it, but what I wanted to do. If you go and um, put the top head on first. Try this. Put the top head on. Put an emperor. Code an emperor. Turn the top... Tune the top to... Da, 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 ba. Whatever the hell that is. You can hear it. it when you hear Bonham's recordings, like live at like 
the Dorel Albert Hall or when he does Moby Dick in the studio, the top end's almost always tuned to the same pitch, which I believe to be da 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 da. head is tuned higher. Now there was a time where guys would tune it like a minor third. The bottom had a minor third above and other guys say the bottom a minor third below. But what I would do is tune the top head to that note, top head, and then turn, flip it over and get your uh, snare side ambassador or snare side diplomat. I use an ambassador. I mean a diplomat's kind of cool too I guess. It's thinner. But then what you do is tune that up at least as high. For now I'll just put it at least as high. A little higher even even sometimes a lot higher. You don't want to go like crazy higher, especially right off the bat. And then put your snares on to where they just kind of stop rattling. And then if you do like a, a turn or two above that, you'll start getting that choky pearl expertie uh, of the day, like real boxy, like, ah, you know? So put it right where they're not too, just enough where they, they're tight, where they don't kind of go like zzz, where you get like a zzz anymore. Like there's a little one here, you'll hear a little bit of a zzz after, but that's because it's the 42, I mean there's this many strands, you know, and a couple of them are a little loose through the quality control. Anyway, that's what you do. So tighten the snares, I mean the wires, just past, just to where they stop going buzzing. Because any higher than that starts to choke. But like I said, uh, it, the, the, the tone control, not so much with the Emperor, with an ambassador though, you, you, the tone control, if you can, the, or whatever it is, just touch it to the bottom of the head. You know, don't blast it in there. And then you should get, if you ass around with it, you get the uh, abonomy tuning. But um, also, too, though, one thing I did notice, I've done a lot of recording over the years. I mean, not like a, I'm not like a studio guy. Like, I mean, I've done some stuff for money, but... Um, but... Let me fix this. I have noticed, like I've been lucky enough to record in studios that have a lot of gear, and when you run, you know, a snare them through certain compressors and stuff, the sound, other aspects of the sound do come into focus. Especially like, I remember like the, um, what is it, the Yuri, what's it, Universal Audio, there was a compressor, the 1176, the 1176. And I was in the studio one time at a place called Gravity here in Chicago, a good studio, there's a, a guy that owns the joint, he's a really good engineer, Doug McBride. Anyway, he ran the, when he ran the bottom and top mics through this 1176, even though the tuning so much, the drum wasn't really tuned as much this way. I wanted to, but he insisted on tuning himself, the red bastard. Um, but it, it kind of, more of the bottom sound, that sound popped out. But it really isn't the tuning. Like, I mean, and plus two, these drums will sound that way. What a lot of guys, I think, definitely do is they under-tighten the top head or totally over-tighten the top head. But the bottom head, I, in my opinion, always should be blasted up. Um, and there you go. So... I think the best thing, honestly, to do if I could do, like, you know, I think somebody always should put their money where their mouth is and do, like, a time-condensed video where they start with the drum totally, and then they say, and you have, like, the whole ten minutes where you put it on, and at the end, there's the bottom sound, you know, but this is the best I can do at the moment. So, there you have it.